Hi everyone, my name is Mathieu. In this video, I'll show you how I've made this carbon fiber watch case. Let me know if you have some questions during the video. Just leave them down below in the comments. I'll try to answer all of them. And let me know as well what your favorite or dream watch would be uh, to have. So let's start with the video and I hope you like it. So for this tutorial, we'll be using the two plates that I've made in the previous tutorial. So if you want to know how these were made, you can check it down below in the description. There will be a link to that video. So here are the plates. So it's a 6K 240 gram square meter, two layers with a peel ply finish. So the cool thing about this tutorial is that if you cannot make carbon fiber plates or have no experience with carbon fiber, but just know a bit about veneering or just if you're a bit handy, you could do this tutorial as well on a pretty low budget. So we won't be making expensive molds, just adding like plates cut to size onto this uh, watch case. So I've bought this watch case on Amazon for about 25 euros. And then we'll be using the sheets of carbon fiber to veneer the entire box, just to skin it with an outside layer of carbon fiber. So with just basic tools and on a low budget, you should be able to do this. So here's just about removing everything for the or from the original box and just taping off the glass because I think the glass will be like your most important part of this box because it would be quite difficult to replace that if you break the glass. So I'm just making sure that I have all the edges tightly with some tape just to prevent any scratches or breaking the glass. So then I'm removing the felt from the back. So I think it's called felt and it had just a bit of glue like sticking with the felt onto the backing. But I have some glue remover laying, laying around. I don't use it that often, but it's always handy to have. So that way I was able to remove all the glue residue and the felt from the back. So next step would be to sand the entire box. Why do we sand it? Just to have a good mechanical bond with the epoxy glue later on. And secondly, you mostly don't know what was used as a finish on these cheaper boxes. Might just be some wood oil or um, like a 1K primer. And like not knowing what it is, you just need to assure yourself to remove any contamination that might be involved with the epoxy coming later on on this box with the veneer of carbon fiber. So I'm protecting these sheets. It's a non-glue like tape. So it's just to keep everything scratch free and dust free during the process. So it's just like a matter of just making some templates and then cutting all the sheets to the right size. I'm making these a bit oversized. I'll explain later on why. Um, and like, like I said in the beginning of the video, this is a pretty basic tutorial. So this is just cutting the sheets with a Stanley knife. So you have to do a few passes, but then you can get like a good cut to make your uh, sheets like here. It's like quite difficult. You have to put a good amount of pressure. So here are a few other options. I'll tell you, I'll tell you later on what my favorite one is, but Keep in mind, so you can use a bandsaw as these sheets are a bit oversized. So um, these will like not always leave good edges, but this is my favorite technique using a Dremel with the rotary blade from Permagrid. So it's a tungsten carbide blade, I think it's similar to diamond cutting blades. And these are pretty good with carbon fiber. So they don't dull out as quickly as just like a metal saw or um, things like that. So here I'm using the Permabond 500. So this is a five minute epoxy. So it's called five minutes. Keep in mind that it's just like it sticks together after five minutes, but it's not a full bond after five minutes. So you have to wait about 24 hours to have a fully cured epoxy uh, glue with your sheet. So I'm using some clamps and some pressure. So I'm using some wooden plates to have an even pressure. Why is this so important? Is because you don't have, you don't want to have a buildup of epoxy on some spots, leaving um, like a wavy finish of your veneer. So here I'm just removing the plates, and as you can see, after about I think it's I did it at six in the afternoon, and when I arrived at the workshop, I was able to continue. So I'm using the permagrids. 
tool like to sand off the biggest part of the excess that is left so it's a bit oversized to be able to have a finish that is fully flat with the other side a tape was added as well to pre like to avoid having scratches like deep scratches in the box and a glue build up as well so this will remove any build up with the epoxy that is dripping out of the sheet that we've applied so the last step is just flattening everything back with the sides with the size and the carbon fiber sheet that we've added so every time you want to glue something you need to have a new nozzle so keep that in mind as well you'll use about six nozzles i think for uh, for this build and then it's just adding sides all the sides till you're happy with the results so keep in mind that the I've wanted to have the front plate like in a full plate and then I just add the sides. So why do I mention this is that the thickness of the carbon fiber will have an influence on the visual aspect. As these sheets are quite thin, it's not that obvious um, in the final result, but these will have a bit of thickness um, onto your part. So here's like the funny thing, I would not call it funny, but after using some like pressurized air I've found like how to remove the hinges I was like a bit skeptical about removing too much fabric and so on during the process but like after seeing this I could have made this box in like half the amount of time because I would have been able to add two sides on the bottom and the like the top parts at once so here we're just removing the film so it's like the protective film is removed and then we can proceed with like the more detailed parts is just like removing that last half a centimeter or something from the edges so now you have a full box with the sanded edges um, you'll see in the close-up like when you know that you're fully level with the bottom plate if you don't have these like dark edges anymore you know you're fully flat with the box so here you can see it's fully flat on all sides and then it's just a matter of sanding the entire box because we'll get ready for the spray paint and uh, a bit of bondo later on so keep in mind not to sand through the weave so this is like the most delicate part it's just making sure that you don't go all the way through the carbon fiber weave or you'll see it like as a visual defect in the weave of the carbon fiber so now we're getting ready for the paint so we can just remove like the layer that we have as a protective film i'm just adding a new one just to be sure that everything is is nicely done and clean J just before the paint i'll be using some putty so it's a black putty so it's a bondo just to fill like the last little gaps that i had in between the layers that were applied so i'm taping everything off just to avoid having too much sanding to do so it takes a bit of time to prepare everything but you'll thank yourself later on that you taped everything because now you just have a small dot to sand flat again so is this possible to use for pinholes in carbon fiber yes you can uh, keep in mind that it's a polyester based so it's not good to to like big surfaces on epoxy because polyester won't bond that well on epoxy but for small dots it's possible so i'm using a primer followed no it's called a filler first followed by a primer and then i'm using a 1k black matte finish so on the sides that were sanded during the process i didn't want to do the beveled edges going to the glass in carbon fiber as well because it would have been a bit difficult to do with the 45 degree angle and so on so now we're getting ready for the clear coat so i'm using a 0 0.8 uh, nozzle spray gun so it's a quite thin nozzle because i just want to do a first coat just wait for it to fully cure sand it back again and after 72 hours um, you know that the clear is fully cured and you can proceed with like a more heavy top coat. Um, I think it's called flood coat in like painter's terms. Um, but keep in mind, like I'm not a professional spray painter. It's a job on itself. So I'm not, I'm just doing okay. Uh, so for this box, I was happy with it. If I would have some more like technical stuff to do, I would 
just sent the box to a spray painter um, doing like the perfect job on this. Uh, as you can see, I was a bit too heavy on, um, on this part. So the clear coat was dripping off a bit, but I was able to remove like the runners of the box by just passing by with my finger. So as you can see, there's still a bit of orange peel on the box. So I think it's more a matter of how much time you want to put into this project. If you would really like to do it good, then you could sand it again with a thousand grit till 3000, use um, some polishing, and then you can have like a mirror gloss finish on your part. So now it's a matter of reassembling everything. So the hinges go back, then the top parts is added again. And then we just can fill the box again with everything that we've saved uh, safely in the workshop to prevent, if, to prevent from losing all the compartments and the parts. So I'm just using some double-sided tape to put it back in. And then all the compartments are added again, followed by the little cushions to store your watches. And then it's just a matter of just cleaning the glass. And there you have it. So you have your skinned or veneered carbon fiber watch case here as a result so i hope you liked this video if you liked it don't forget to leave a like if you have some more questions or, re or remarks leave them in the comments down below and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials coming up later on so thanks for watching and see you guys in the next video